I mean, I, I, I don't go to parties so that I don't have to explain uh, what I do. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of misconceptions. I don't know how to, to describe it, and it bugs the shit out of me. But also, you don't understand or have any frame of reference what I'm talking about unless I say this, and then if I do say this, you have the complete wrong thing. It's like, oh, I was trying to tell my friends, and I just couldn't figure out how to say it. Sometimes I say, like, under my breath. Which is so stupid. You end up spending a lot of time telling people what you don't do. They're, like, picturing a birthday party clown. And the more I talk about it, the more confused they'll be. It's a lot of work <laughs> to come up with new names for it. They're like, well, what is it? What else is it? What do you do? What does it mean? You're like, well, you know, uh, it, it, it's a show about everything and nothing. <laughs> I describe clown as celebrating your mistakes in public. You're at your most vulnerable um, and your most simplified, most distilled version of yourself. It's just sort of crazy, wild comedy that, like, that super experiential. And really it's just making something up from nothing. It's always a rush, it never gets old, yeah. because anything can happen, you know, because you could change your bit at any second, depending on what happens you play the moment. And then eventually you kind of have that out of body thing where it's just going and impulses take over. The laughter is kind of long and rolling and rich and deep. Your body is integrated into your imagination. Like, I think we hit the back of the brain, like this place where we're hardwired to play, and like logic doesn't even, isn't even a requirement. Fully engaged, fully physically, emotionally, completely in invested. There can be like heart and like earnestness. Where you're like, this is who I am, and I'm unapologetic about it, and I'm okay with you knowing that I, I want your love and affection. And it's also got that sort of element of spectacle in a way. But it's meant to look like it's a disaster happening in front of your face. The clown never feels safe. Yeah. It's a rush. How do we, how does like the comedian walk the wire, you know, without a net? What does that mean? If clown offers permission, then uh, you have to deduce that permission has been refused previously, right? So there's been some policing and some repression of some kind going on. Uh, and that, to me, is just absolutely exhilarating to watch somebody kind of overcome their inner police person <clears throat> and start to reveal aspects of themselves, not just to us, but even to them. We play a lot with duality and paradox, which is particularly indicative of, of, of some Buddhist teachings. We spend a lot of time in a kind of a uniformity with ourselves, trying to, you know, uh, obey whatever st structures and constructs that we've inherited or absorbed from the world, from our families, and so on and so on. And so I like to undermine those constructs by looking at what would be their opposites and, and building uh, those kind of paradoxical relationships within ourselves, within our whatever it is we're doing. And that learning it is unlearning everything and that the more of an expert you become, the more of like a fool you become. Like that's just like all these beautiful contradictions in the work. It's like this beautiful paradox all the time where it's not serious, but you have to, you know, have discipline within it. But at the same time, you must be free and fully free. But inside to have that freedom, you have to have that form to rebel against, but don't push it down. And then that's when you can get like super analytical or, or too like philosophical about it. And then you're just like, okay, wait, chill out. Again, you're just talking about performing in clown. We, we live in this sort of dualistic society, good, evil, um, which is arbitrary. So the clown can pull you out of that by exposing the absurdity of seeing things as either or. You're walking along, the universe is in order, and you, you trip, and the trip itself is just the collision, but the moment after, where everybody saw you trip and you can't deny it and you have to live in your own humility is where you get catch a glimpse into the depth of a clown or a person or the experience of being a human. How can you kind of put your heart, your ass on the line in such a way that is um, fun, funny, ridiculous, absurd, scary. 
to follow your pleasure and that hopefully the audience will shares it with you. Yeah, you're always playing. Yeah. You know, we do have the opportunity when we take the stage, it's an empty stage and we can do whatever we want to like make something meaningful happen or fail making something meaningful happen. And you don't have to be skilled at anything, you just have to do it to the best of your ability. And then we see this person's humanity and it's so beautiful that they're sharing this like deeply intimate and real, however that means to you, moment with us. And often you find your best moments in the shit, like in the failure. And I think that's very true of my life for sure. You know, and it kind of makes you less fearful because you're like, yeah, but I could be sinking. I could be, I could find something here. And then I'm like, okay, thank God that happened because I never would have found this great thing. Yeah, you take a big it. swing, take yeah. a big swing. And if you crash and burn, you embrace it. Yeah. Don't run away from the stuff that makes you special or talented or unique or different. Like, you, that's what that's why we love you. In a way, clown is like a thing that doesn't really exist, right? It's more like an ideal. It's more like when I see something I like, I call it clown to own it. <laughs> when I'm in a show that's working or I'm at a show watching that's working, I couldn't even tell you what I was laughing at. Like, I just sit in this moment, this communal moment with all these people, with a performer that I feel intimately attached to, even though it ends like the minute the curtain drops or the lights go out. And I'm just laughing and I just feel like it's, I don't know, it's like pre-conscious, pre-verbal. It's just part of our brain that like is desperate to connect with each other. And we have this way that we used to do it and that we don't do it anymore. And somehow this show has given us just a little like window back into this like primitive, beautiful, unadulterated way for human beings to sort of cavort and have fun with each other. No, you know, there's that loss of self, being in the moment, uh, and, and you're uniting the audience with you. So you're lost in that. Those are sweet moments. And it brings you some kind of peace, right? Some kind of altered uh, experience. It changes the molecules. So that, I mean, it sounds enormous and, you know, highfalutin, but actually that stuff can take place just when you get two people to look at each other or one person to look at an audience or, you know, simple prompts will bring that wonder. That gets really beautiful. We're just going to die anyways. Yeah. So, might as well yeah. clown around. Oh, no, rip it up. You know when a clown walks into the room, and it doesn't have to be someone that's trained as a clown for many, many years. Sometimes they're a person's just a clown, or an animal's just a clown, or whatever it is, and you can tell, because they come in and you just, you love them. <laughs>